Hello comrades, Commissar Bro here today with another episode of Buttery Bulgaria, that's right. Unfortunately, I kind of made a mistake. <laughs> um, uh, basically what happened was I already recorded a video earlier today, and uh, when I went into the editing, I realized I recorded the entire video without any narration whatsoever. So uh, essentially there was no sound, it was just a nice little quiet video, um, and yeah, it was, it was a complete and utter accident. <laughs> so I'll give you a summed up version of what I did earlier, and we'll just move on from here. So essentially, we finished the fight in the Caucasus against the Russians, the Germans, and the new Russian state that has been established uh, by uh, Germany which is just called Russia now, <laughs> has pushed the USSR all the way uh, to the, actually really past the Urals at this point, right? Well, not really. I mean, the Urals wouldn't like this area. Yeah, no, they pushed past the Urals, whatever. Needless to say, they have been pushed way back. And uh, the land of the Soviet Union is very, very quickly diminishing. They still have a, de a couple of decent sized armies, but in the overall scheme of things, they don't really stand much of a chance of the combined forces of the Axis powers. So yeah, we've got that. And also, uh, I've been using my forces to push the Ottomans all the way into, or excuse me, Turkey. I keep saying Ottomans, I apologize. Uh, but the Turks, we have pushed the Turks all the way down, uh, as you can see to this region here, even to the point where um, somehow I think we're not at war with them anymore. I don't really know how that happened. Uh, I guess Germany negotiated a peace with them. So basically all this land is now fully under my grip. That's right. And uh, we actually have just finished researching tank prototype 3. So we can actually build heavy tanks now. So uh, all things considered, it's looking pretty good for uh, Bulgaria, sweet, buttery, and beautiful she is. Um, now, we are still at war with Saudi Arabia, and that should be a pretty easy push over against them. Let's actually get a treaty, a, a request a military access treaty with Palestine. All right, and we'll even be so nice as to provide them military access to our lands so they can continue fighting the Turks where they so please. Um, and after we take Saudi Arabia, we're going to be looking at fighting Egypt. Now, Egypt could be a very formidable foe if they continually build up their forces. Also, if the British continually assist them in uh, Africa. So that's something we need to keep our eyes out for as well. Without further ado, let's get rolling, baby. I'm actually going to move all my forces up here. And yeah, we're going to leave those guys there, but we're going to move the rest of these forces down to the south, like the second army. Yeah, actually, you know what? We're just going to split off the tanks. Yeah, we'll just do that since the tanks are really fast and should be more than enough to handle our opponents in Saudi Arabia. Now, the one thing you need to keep in mind is fuel is actually a thing here. So if your tanks run out of fuel, unfortunately, they are literally not going anywhere. So that's something we got to be careful about, but huh, I'm sure we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Now, I'm also going to keep the majority of my armies here to defend against any possible Turkish aggression. Because you can see here, they have an absolutely ridiculously sized army uh, with 942 offensive power, 1,500 defense, 586 health, 626 in total. Uh, 24 artillery units and 37 divisions. So basically, that's fucking terrifying. <laughs> and if they actually decided to do something, they could arguably do a lot of damage to us. So we're going to keep our stuff there in the off chance that we, for some reason, go back to war with them. Also, I have plans to move this army, the 36th, down here uh, to Delame so that they can move against the Ottoman, or sorry, the Turks. I just, you know, if you, if you hear me say the Ottomans, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> so we're going to prepare to possibly move against them down here. We'll move two armies in that region so we can come out of Delame immediately to Kut and then Shamia, uh, and then move down there into Kuwait. 
or okay, I guess Kuwait's already taken by Saudi Arabia. But needless to say, we're going to be moving that way. Anyways, queuing it. And then we're going to send these tanks to assist in Al Hamad. That's right. In the turn. Let's see what happens. Yes, let all that movement occur. Boom. Now, the Saudi and Arabian armies, I've already kind of scoured over them, and they're kind of pathetic, honestly. It's mostly, okay, authoritarian Germany has broken away from Germany and started the civil war. I somehow feel like nothing will come out of that. But, yeah, see, there they are. There's authoritarian, yeah, <laughs> with a little militia brigade. Okay. <laughs> militia division. They're literally not going to be able to do shit against Germany. Germany will crush that in a heartbeat. But anyway, so Saudi Arabia is pretty much made up of small militia groups. Now, this one is kind of a big one because it's 31 militia groups, so that's kind of concerning. But with our additional tank support, we should arguably be able to take it out. Plus, I'll bring in the 45th Army to also assist uh, in fighting those guys. Now, if we also take a look at the rest of their units... Again, there's really not too much to be afraid of here. It's just a bunch of militia, and I'm really not concerned in the least about what they can... Honestly, the Middle East has pretty much been pacified as far as I'm concerned. The biggest army is definitely the 366 of the Turks. That is a really big army and is kind of uh, freaky. So, yep, that, that is what it is. We're still producing plenty of food. We're still producing around 50 manpower a turn. Our industrial capacity is kind of low. But, eh, I mean, it, it is what it is. I'm not too concerned about it, if you know what I mean. I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Our opponents amass against us, and we've crushed all of them uh, uh, easily enough. So, really, I'm, <laughs> I don't know. This is, this is kind of just a land grab at this point. And taking over... Taking over Saudi Arabia will be a nice place for some oil fields. We've already got plenty of places that could have possible oil fields in the future. But, eh, eh, you know, you know, who's, who's really paying that much attention to that anyway? Let's merge all these tanks together. Alright, so that's 414. We have more than enough capabilities to take on the Saudi Arabians uh, there. We do have less health than them, but our ridiculous amount of offensive capacity uh, as opposed to them is pretty much just going to steamroll them. I'm not concerned in the least. What we'll do is we'll split off uh, boop, 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 wrong button. We'll split off some of this infantry, uh, this mounted infantry and we'll take these guys down here uh, to Shafa and try to take over some of the more of the southern regions. We'll kind of, we'll, I'm thinking we'll have like a three prong thing going on here. Have guys come in uh, through Shifa, have guys come in through Nafud, and then have guys go in through Mathena, uh, so they can pretty much move straight up, take out Kuwait in that whole region there, um, and we'll move southeast to take over the rest of Saudi Arabia, and sort of a, not really Blitzkrieg, but a pretty quick maneuver, I'm thinking, oh goodness, they actually did a little bit of damage to me, and I haven't actually killed any of them yet, huh, interesting, very interesting. It looks like we might actually need some additional support. Damn it! <laughs> Palestine came in and took that territory. I didn't think they were going to do that. I would have been much happier had they not done that. Ugh, whatever. No big deal. We'll still move in our cavalry to Hijaz. And hopefully we will outrun them. <laughs> we move uh, three times as fast as them, so arguably speaking we should pretty much be able to, but eh, whatever. And again, I'm going to keep this army, the 45th here in Delame, in case the Turks go to war with us so we can very quickly maneuver against them. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it just dawned on me. I haven't been researching things. Hydrophone, just get it done. It's something that I see there and I'm not really... Actually, well, a lot of things are already doing that. So deep operations, improved hull design, improved hull design, deep operations. Yeah, I don't really know. I don't really care. It's all going to work out in the end, right? Right. See, what's that going to be? One turn. Improved hold design. Improved hold design. We just need five, five points. So, improved hold design and improved hold design, and still get that done in one more turn. Cool beans. 
All right, so we don't waste our research capacity, considering I've already pretty much wasted it. All right, the battle's going well against the forces in the food. They're not ready for our tank assault. Hopefully I don't run out of fuel. Now, the only reason I would run out of fuel, because as you can see, I have more than enough uh, resources up here, is actually supply rates. If you look, once it's done loading, that is. There we go, completed the hydrophone. All right, if you look here, you can see that like Al Hamad only has a 20% supply rate for our units. So that gives you basically an idea that our forces engaged here in uh, Nafud are probably getting 10% or less. So it's going to take a little bit of time for that to actually occur. I wish it would happen a bit faster. And that army is going to get to Hijaz before we get there, which is going to be incredibly disappointing. Mm, yeah, I'm not happy about that. Uh, Palestine's getting a lot of my land. Getting a lot of my land. Mm -mm. At least we'll be able to take over the Suez Canal. So that means we can pretty much restrict all movement through this area from any enemy forces. That cuts England off from its Indian territories, which is, to me, a huge victory. Speaking of which, it seems like the Indian armies are actually doing very well against the British. Now, the British have superior technology, undoubtedly, and much larger armies overall. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, okay, yeah, they definitely have larger armies, stronger armies. But the Indians are actually still doing a pretty damn good job of not letting their territory get occupied by the British completely. Considering they started out with only a territory or two, they almost, enti they almost own the entire Indian subcontinent, which is incredibly impressive, I must say. All right, so we've got our tanks. We're going to move in our tanks against these militia divisions. And actually, they, they're fully supplied, so we should be able to just rummage on through all this stuff. We're going to split off one tank group. The 5th Armored, I suppose? I don't really care. The 5th Armored, we're going to send it up through this way. Adamara, since Pal uh, not Palestine, but Saudi Arabia has pretty much already taken all these regions, we're just going to come in and take all that and add it to our collection of territories. That's right. That's right. How long is it going to take them to get there? All right, we'll be there in Hijaz in one turn, so I'm not too concerned about that. We'll move the main army up, the three or the 36th. Move it straight to the middle. In three turns, they'll be to Kasim and Roma. Looking good, looking good, gentlemen. Couldn't have done it better myself. Oh, wait, I am doing it. <laughs> uh, I can't get over how much we've accomplished with Bulgaria. I've just never, I've never done this with Bulgaria before, so this is pretty cool that we're actually uh, creating this successful empire here. And if we actually look, we're very... Overall, we're the fourth most powerful nation in the world, uh, which I actually think puts us above the UK. Let's take a look and see. Oh, no, we're right behind the UK, but we are more powerful than France uh, and even Italy. Yeah, look at that. We're, we're, Italy is right behind us. But, yeah, we're ahead even in technology. Are we ahead in technology? Huh, interesting. We're the fourth most advanced uh, uh, country, technologically speaking. That's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Again, I've never done this before uh, with this particular country, so this is all playing out much better than I ever could have expected. Deep operations, improved wool, improved hull design, improved hull design, deep operations. Alright, so everything's doing something. Just keep researching. Give me more research. I just wish I had more manpower. That seems to be my biggest gripe as plain as Bulgaria, it's just the total lack of manpower. And even all these additional countries I've taken over, it seems like we're still having a lot of trouble of really pulling that off. <laughs> Which kind of sucks, but eh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get it get it rolling along better. And we're also going to go ahead and improve that. Uh, we'll build a food... I guess we should build... Should we build a food processing plant? Maybe, maybe, maybe we should. Maybe we shouldn't. Nah. Nah. You know what? What's our food production at? Uh, we're still positive. So until we... Well, a few more turns and then I'll probably build that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't want to waste all my newfound manpower already. We just did. I don't know. I should actually upgrade the industry of one of these cities on the coast, though. Um, that would probably be a smart idea. Just because we don't have any good cities on the coast. 
And even then, Jesus, we need a lot of upgrades. Mm, no bueno, no bueno. Yeah, I guess Antalya will be the one we start with. Um, should we have a boat? Why not? Can't we build us a battlecruiser? Ooh, a dreadnought. I much prefer dreadnoughts, personally. Let's build, let's build a couple of those. We'll build two dreadnoughts. We'll take 30 turns to build both of them. But, eh, acceptable loss, acceptable loss. All right. So, as you can see, we pushed further against Saudi Arabia, taking plenty of the lands, and now we're going to take Nejd. Um, the 46, which is our full-on tank army, is going to be moving in from the, the northeast, and then the, uh, the 36 is going to come from the northwest. It's going to take two turns for them to get there, but only one turn for them to get there. Again, the resistance is, pff, like, laughable, honestly. <laughs> it's laughable. They really don't have much going on here. So... And as you can see, we've got them engaged in Sarawat, and they're not even really doing any damage to us. So this is pretty much just a steamroll, ladies and gentlemen. Poor, poor Saudi Arabia. They tried the best. They did what they could. But their best wasn't good enough. Yeah, that's right. Poor guys. The good thing is this pretty much gives us full-on dominance of the Middle East. And we can pretty much move against all of these other uh, lesser countries in the region uh, and pretty much beat their ass. Who is this? The Trucial States. Saudi Arabia is picking a fight with them. Too bad for them. That's not really going to work out too well. Who are they at war with? Well, they're about to be at war with us as well. They have some oil reserves I wouldn't mind having. Look at that. 50. They're producing 50 a turn. Yes, that would, that would be nice to go with my... Uh, how much am I producing now? 225? Yeah, that would pretty much increase it by 20% or so. Would not be a bad thing to take over. Um, the rest of these guys aren't at war with us. Yeah, Yemen's not. But this is owned by the United Kingdom, so we're definitely going to come in here and take that land right over. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the move order in. Yep, in five turns they'll have that done. And let's just go ahead and move to Mara. So in eight turns, it'll take eight turns and all to conquer all that. Probably not. Once I get some of my tanks freed up in the main fighting there in Nejd, it'll probably be a steamroll. All right. So since we've already defeated the forces, the Saudi Arabian forces, pretty much, I'm just going to cancel the 36 from moving any further to the south. We're going to move them back up to Al Hamad uh, just for our, for our inevitable invasion of Egypt. Because that's definitely where we're going. Iran is another country I'm very heavily considering war against. Iran has serious resource reserves. Um, now, they don't have many cities, and their manpower is probably relatively negligible. Um, but, overall, Germany, if, if Germany gets their hands on that, that's, that's a huge piece of land that would go straight into our coffers. The big problem with that, though, is if we open up engagements there we would actually have to worry about the British in India should they succeed against the Indians uh, because the Indians don't actually seem to be they're not doing bad mind you they're doing pretty good but if the British just get a couple more reinforcements or if China joins the war uh, for example then because I don't think China is actually part of anybody oh that's Mongolia whoops let me, let me kick yeah see China's all by themselves, amazingly enough, and they're doing damn good. <laughs> they've pretty much, they've shown Japan the business. Now, Japan still has such a massive fleet that they don't even ever, they don't ever have to worry about China breaking out uh, by any means of the imagination, but China has a ridiculous amount of potential, and as you can see, they're still the sixth most powerful uh, in industrial power in the world, the sixth best technology, and sixth overall with number one in manpower. So they're still a huge force to be reckoned with, and militarily wise, they're way bigger than us. Uh, you know, honestly, most of the major countries in the world are much stronger than us. But again, let's say semantics, semantics. But anyway, I feel like this is a good place to stop. The game is getting really good, and I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying playing it. Like, seriously, this, this is... I always love Making History. Making History is one of my favorite games of all time. And Making History 2 has definitely... Uh, it's... I didn't like it at first, as I've mentioned 
pretty much throughout this this entire series I keep mentioning this how it was not one of my favorites but now it's really really worked a place into my heart and I fucking love this game now um, and it's 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 a it's a worthy successor in my opinion so yeah 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 and honestly I'll probably when we get closer to the end of this I'll probably try out a couple of the mods for making history too I know a couple of people have asked me to uh, check out their their mods or um, even just some mods they recommended and I can definitely see myself doing that um, it very 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 soon here because you know why the hell not really? it's a good game it deserves a little bit of attention from the commissar I feel like you know because then I can show it off to you guys and you, know, you guys can go play it and everybody's going to have a good time it's going to have a real good time but anyway this has been commissar bro Thank you so much for watching. I love all you guys. Seriously, you support me through this and keep me doing all this. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. But the fact that you guys keep watching and liking and commenting, it, it really keeps me going even when the times are tough. So, yeah, I, I really appreciate that, and I hope you guys will keep on watching. This has been Kamisabro, and I'll see all you amazing people next time.